This is the Marmot Yolabolly lightweight sleeping bag. It's both a sleeping bag and a quilt in one. I'm gonna show you the features. Let's check it out. G'day folks, Ben from Snow is here today with the Yolo Bolly, Yola Bolly sleeping bag from Marmot. I've got the Yola Bolly 30 in front of me here. There's the 15 and the 30 available. Uh, the 15 being a slightly warmer bag, and the 30 will cover all those details shortly. And it's quite a unique bag. It's downfilled. It's unique in that it's got this little sort of extra flap of fabric in here so you can use it as a sleeping bag like this, or it folds right out as a quilt as well. And we'll show you all those details shortly. Now the Marmot 30, uh, sorry, the Yellow Bolly 30 that I've got in front of me here, being the lighter weight bag, has a comfort rating down to zero. And the 15, which has got a bit more fill in it, has a comfort rating down to minus three degrees. As I mentioned, there's two different um, bags in the series, the 15 and the 30, the 15 being the warmer, the 30 being the lighter bag. And each come in three sizes, a small, regular, and a large. At the time of shooting this video here in Australia, we could only get the regular, and that's what I've got in front of me here. Now the regular measures 190 centimeters from the top of the bag here to the bottom of the foot up there. At the widest point at the shoulders here, 75 centimeters on the outside of that tape is down to about 45 centimeters at the foot in there. Now I'm gonna climb in the bag shortly to show you how much room is inside the bag, but the regular size is suitable for users up to about 183 centimeters or six foot. Now I'm just a little bit over that, so it'd be interesting to see how much space I've got inside. Before we climb into the bag and talk about all the features, I just wanna cover off on the fabrics of the bag. Now the top here is a 20 denier nylon with a mini ripstop in it. If you look close, you can see a little mini ripstop weave in there. That's a little bit different than the base, which is a 30 denier nylon with a DWI treatment to resist um, as much water as it can getting through the fabric. And there are these little sort of grippy patches on the base here, which are designed to stop the bag from sliding around too much. I don't know how effective it would be, but they, they may have some impact. Now inside the bag is a, just a 20 denier plain weave nylon. This is uh, once again on this extra little flap inside that'll make more sense again. That's the rip stuff on top and the 20 denier on the bottom. And in the head section here is kind of a brushed polyester. So it almost feels cottony. So it's a slightly nicer feeling fabric up around where your head is. And sandwiched between all of this fabric is a 650 loft down with a down defender that's got a treatment in it um, to sort of help um, resist the, the effect that water has on down. Traditionally, down used to go very soggy or lose all its effects when it got wet. With the treatments nowadays, it's much more effective should your sleeping bag happen to get wet. Let's have a look at the zippers on the bag. Now these are YKK zippers and there's a single zipper that runs right down the side here and it goes to the base and around the foot. There's not a second zipper here, so you can't zip two of these bags together. This goes all the way to this side here. It'll make more sense shortly why there's only one zipper when I unzip the bag. And there's also a second zipper back up the top here, which is just a little half zipper here so that you can unzip this and just fold the top of the sleeping bag down so that it's away from your shoulders. That also doubles uh, with the ability to be able to stick your feet out the bottom or have it over your shoulders. You can use these little press studs here and you can stick your arms out the side here. You do the same on the other side with this little press stud here. Put your arms out the side there and you can wear it kind of like a almost like a cape over your shoulders as you walk around the camp sort of sitting around the fire. We're just looking at the general construction of the bag. It's Kind of, a, it's a mummy shape, but it's not really tapered at the end. They're more of a tapered rectangular shape and they're horizontal baffles along this way. And each of these baffles is what we call box construction. So this um, seam here doesn't meet up with the seam on the bottom. It's not sewn through like this. If this is one baffle and this is on the other side, it's not sewn through like this. There's a gap in between the little wall that features along this seam here, which allows continual sort of layer of, of down above your body without any cold spots. So it, it's a sign of a better quality bag when you've got baffle construction or a more efficient bag when you've got baffle construction. The foot itself has got a little bit of three dimension to it. So it's, it's sort of a box foot, not, not a big roomy box foot, but it doesn't taper to the end. So that does make it a bit more efficient around your foot there. And the hood section up here, is quite tapered, a bit three-dimensional. You've got this kind of big um, draft tube over the top here, and it will sort of hug your head quite comfortably and retain the warmth pretty well inside once you've got that done up. And there's a little draw cord that runs over the top here just to tighten it up 
not around the bottom though, and that will make sense just as I undo it now to explain all the other features. Now I'll undo the zipper down the side here. Now it's got a little sort of anti-snag feature on there. There's also anti-snag tape inside there to stop the, the fabric from getting caught. It can still get caught, but it certainly makes it a whole lot easier. So this zips right down to the base of the foot there. Just be careful to see scenarios like this where the fabric got caught a little bit. So just go nice and steady to the base around the corner. Now there's no second zip here. This goes right to the very end of the bag here. And the zip itself doesn't actually come apart. There's no, you, we don't take that any further. It just zips to the end there and stays like this as such. From there, we can open up one side of the bag. I'll do our little press stud here. And we can see we've got this extra sort of flap of fabric in here that gives us a bit of warmth over the top. But if we then open that up as well, we then create a big doona or a quilt, I suppose, that we could actually just sleep under a quilt or throw it over the top of two people if you like. And the benefit of this is this now becomes a, a quilt that could be used over the top of a single person or over the top of two if you like. Um, it's, uh, this flap in here also benefits in that you can leave it lie on top of this with a, a lighter weight layer over the top of you or put both of these over the top of you for extra warmth. Now I do need to correct myself a little bit on these press studs at the top here. You can't actually wear it like a cape because there's no hole on this side to put your arm through. So mum might say that these press studs are here to allow you to put your arms out the side. In reality that's only really going to work if you've got this undone. You're lying on top of this section. Um, you do this side up here as well and you can then do this zip up if this zip came up to here you then have this hole here to put your arm out of this hole here to put your arm out of so you can sit upright with your arms out the side you bag over your top here and stay pretty warm while you're cooking dinner or playing a game inside the tent now i am 185 centimeters or six foot one tall and i've got reasonably broad shoulders so I'll crawl in here and see how much space i've got now they're designed for 183 centimeter user so we'll see how much space just before i get in i will mention they this bag obviously is unique design with a zip, I meaning you can't zip two bags together. This continuous zipper down the side here doesn't work zipping two bags together. But this extra zip on the other side here does kind of give me this freedom to, to kind of fold it back like this. And as I mentioned before, as you might as well demonstrate it now, we'll give this a go with the little press studs here to show that you can pull this up underneath here, stick your arms, I should have done this up afterwards, stick your arms out the side Pull this up over your shoulder and you can wear this kind of like a cape in the tent with your arms out the side so you've still got your arms free. So a bit of messing around with the stud here. I'll put my arm out there. You see I've got this up over the top of me here. I'm nice and warm. I can even put this over my head if I like and I've got my arms free to do things. That feels pretty comfortable. I'm gonna lie down in it now, put the hood over my head to see how much room I've got with this done up. Now this extra flap inside here doesn't actually seal in the bag. It just sits loose. So I guess at the foot end, it might sort of work its way across and I do need to hold that across there. But if I do this up now, this side and the other side, the zips work pretty well. The lighter fabric on top does get caught now and then, but they are pretty good. It's quite tight around the top here. Let's try it crawling. Feeling really pretty warm already. Now I would say, I wouldn't want to be any taller, but I've got room at my feet there. They're, they're just touching the end. And I've still got space above my head. So I'd say up to 185, you've still got room in this bag, but you wouldn't want to be any taller than that. Any taller and you're going to start pushing on the ends and it's not going to be as efficient, particularly at the foot end here. As so most of the features, the last thing I want to do is put it in a stuff sack and show you how small it packs away. Now there's two different bags that came with the Yolo Bolly. There's just a, this, this guy here, which is the stuff sack you use when you take it out on the trail. It's just a standard stuff sack. It's not a compression sack. And you also get this mesh bag here that you use for storage that allows a bit of ventilation. So whenever your bag's not in use, down bag in particular, it's good to store it in this uncompressed so the down can breathe. It doesn't get smelly and it stays dry. Now I'm just gonna compress this in here. Now um, you can use a compression sack with this. Uh, like I said, it doesn't come with the compression sack. So 
I'll see how small this packs down here now. Now this is the Yolabolly 30. So the 15 is gonna pack up slightly bigger than this guy here. I don't have one here with me now to, to show you, but it's gonna give you a pretty good idea of the difference. Now that went in there really easily. You could actually save a few grams on this bag if you got a lighter weight bag than this. It's quite a heavy duty bag. It's gonna protect it pretty well, but you could certainly squash that down a whole lot further than that. If I squash that there now, you can see that that's down to probably a third, almost a quarter of the complete pack size. A bit of a the traditional now gene comparison. If I squash that down, hold it next to it, you could probably even get that down a little bit further with a compression sack. So I'd say you're probably going to be slightly larger than a standard now gene bottle. If you've got yourself a smaller stuff sack, it's going to be harder to push it in there. Squash it down though, you have a nice compact bag. These are a really versatile bag for quite a range of seasons, um, from winter through to probably the shoulder season, spring and summer, particularly given that it can be used as a quilt as well. Um, and they feel really nice, loaded with features. You can grab these online at snowies.com.au at our lowest prices every day. If you've got any questions though, let us know down in the comments below. Subscribe to our channel, we'll send you all of our latest information or check out some other sleeping bag videos like this one down here.